Welcome to the Reinvention Show with your co your host Carol Wayne. Today, Carol's guests are Joel Bogus and Brandy Sweezy. I'm your producer Keith Fashan, and now your host Carol Wayne. Welcome to the Reinvention Show, the one and only show that entertains, educates, and inspires you on your journey for reinvention. Today, we're talking about reinventing and finding and using your authentic voice. So most of us have been raised um, to conform and fit in and act and behave in a certain way and not really use our authentic voice. And it worked for a lot of us until the economy changed. And now people are demanding that they really get to know who it is that they're, they're dealing with. So that's what we're going to talk about today is how do you find that, your true voice, and then use it in a very authentic way to increase your own business and personal success. So today we're going to start with Mr. Joel Vargas. Hey, Joel. Hey, Carol. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, man. This is such a treat. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah. yeah, I've been on Joel's show, and now he's on mine, and then I'll be on his. And, you know, it's just great when it works that way. <laughs> so, uh, Joel is a syndicated radio host, an expert in counseling psychology and personal growth, and a best-selling author. He's the guy people call when they're feeling stuck, out of options, and ready for a relaunch. Originally from San Antonio, Texas, Joel earned his undergraduate degree from Texas Tech and his MBA and Master's in Counseling from Amberton University. His latest book, Finding Your Voice, nailed the number one spot on Amazon in three categories, success, self-esteem, and happiness on the same day and in the same hour. Very cool. Thank you. He and his wife, Pei, have been married for 12 years. They live in Dallas, Fort Worth area, and have two retired therapy dogs. Wow. So, Joel, <laughs> your parents were once told that you would never live a normal life. That's true. Well, can you tell us why and were they right? Sure, yeah. Um, boy, that's a, that's a great story. You know, you know life as, as an at-risk child started for me about age three. Uh, my parents separated and then divorced, and I uh, lived with my mom for a period of time, and Gosh, there was a time there when we lived, my mom and I, on not much more than food stamps, or at least they were called food stamps back then, and then a $100 a month gift from one of her relatives. And in that time, I'd go back and forth and visit with my dad and my mom. And one time I was visiting with my dad, we went out for a nature hike, my dad, myself, and some of his friends. And, you know, kids being with who they are and what they are, I kind of drifted away from the group and I ended up climbing atop a bridge, a 30-foot tall bridge, and then at the end of the day I had uh, fallen from that bridge. It involved a, a speeding locomotive, it involved a, a, a multiple skull fractures, and it, it also involved heroic uh, medical and divine intervention to just get me to where I could get to a hospital and you know there was a, a coma involved and a long recovery process and the the doctors told my parents right there when I was in a coma that I would never come out that I was pretty much done for and then I came out three weeks later and then they said you know don't expect Joel to lead a normal life and my wife jokes with me and she says you know I guess they were right about that Joel there's pretty much nothing normal uh, about your life including you know the the whole growth and recovery process not to mention the work that I do now helping people relaunch themselves while finding their own voice voice and in your book finding your voice you say to find your voice sometimes all you need is a new conversation Mm -hmm. Filled with hope, optimism, and possibilities. So, why is it that we need a new conversation? I think we need a new conversation is because we're we're so involved in, in our lives that we can either be blind to or simply not assign value 
to other parts of our personality. And one of the things that I encourage all of my clients to do when they start the, the coaching process with me is to uh, email out a little one-page uh, worksheet that I have that asks other people, well, okay, what have you seen in me? What kind of gifts and strengths have you seen in me? What do I always talk about getting involved in or doing or, or solving? You know, what else have you seen that I just frankly haven't seen? And that starts the conversation, either between them and the, the other people that they involve in that little exercise, or between me and, and them in a coaching conversation. And what a lot of people have found, Carol, is that the responses that come from those emails that people send out, they actually reinforce a lot of things that people have already known about themselves, but as I mentioned earlier, they either have been blind to or they just haven't assigned value to. It's like them saying, yeah, but that's just me. Yeah, and I did that. that and, that's, and that's the point. Go yeah. ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I did that myself with my coach. She said, um, reach out to everyone and ask, have them tell you what your best qualities are. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I got it back, I was like, really? Oh, when, one person said it was a good gardener. Another person said it was good at drinking wine. But most of it was really positive stuff. And, and uh, yeah, it really changed things because I wasn't feeling very good about myself at that time. So to get all these positive affirmations back from, from people that I trust and respect was really, really good. And well, it, it, works, it works really good because uh, I, I encourage people to do that right at the beginning of, of the whole personal growth experience. And so that actually starts out that process on, on a positive note. And matter of fact, one of the ladies that I just started coaching, she's a 53-year-old single woman, and I, I sent her that worksheet. It's just a one, two-page worksheet, five simple questions. And I said, share this with three of your closest contacts. It can be family members, it can be coworkers, it can be you know your, your boyfriend, uh, a lover, someone who is going to tell you the truth about what they see in you. And her first name is Karen. And Karen not only sent it out to three people, but she sent it out to multitudes of people because she, she was ready to find her voice. She was ready to move forward and relaunch into the second half of her life and to do it with, um, with power, with, with passion, with tremendous ambition. So she blasted it out to as many people as she could, and just one by one by one, those, those little filled-out questionnaires started coming back, and it was empowering. It was empowering to me as her coach. She was forwarding them on to me, but boy, it was really empowering to her because it showed her that, wow, pe people love me. They care about me. They've seen something in me that, that I just thought, well, that's just who I am. And that's the point. That is who she is. And we were able to take all of that information. And we're still early in our conversation, mm -hmm. Karen and I. But we're able to take all that information and, and, and work with it to move on it, to bend it, to shape it, to mold it into creating a rock star second half for her. So it's a new conversation. It, cool. it, it's, it's what we all need. Now, are there any downsides if you don't find your own voice? Sure, that, that is a great question. And finding your voice is really a, a choice, and it's an option. And it, are there downsides to not finding your own voice? Yeah, if moving through life, just kind of towing the company line, getting status quo performance in pretty much every area of your life, if that's acceptable, then absolutely continue on with that. But for, for most people, the people that I work with, and I definitely know the people that are in this audience, Carol, and the people that, that you work with, they know that there's something more within them. They know that they have more to contribute. You know, they they want to make a, a difference, and not just making a difference for the sake of making a difference, but they want to make a difference in something that makes a difference to them and, and to their life. And those kind of people 
are are the ones that are on fire about you know, getting in touch with your own unique, authentic voice, and then putting wheels under it so you can use it to make a difference for others and and for yourself. Is it for everyone? No, uh, it's it's really not, because frankly, some people are they're still they're able to tolerate just getting by and and that's fine you know one thing I, I say to pretty much all the people that I come across and that I work with I told them I said you know I have no agenda for your life if everything's fine and you're okay with saying I'm fine then that's fine you know who am I to tell you differently mm -hmm. How, however if you're ready to take the wisdom, the experiences, and the false starts of your first half, add some rocket fuel to them, and then blast off into a incredible second half, then, then, then let's talk about it. Let, let's figure out how we can develop a plan to find your voice and then to, to activate it. Well, that's really cool. One of the things that I've discovered on my own reinvention journey sure. is that when I've reached out to healers and empaths, which I've never done before, they always go straight to my throat chakra and they tell me that there's all this energy there. And it's so interesting to me because I have a thyroid problem. <laughs> and so my health issue is right here too. And even today, I woke up and I thought, this is so ironic. We're talking about finding your own voice today, and I wake up with a sore throat and a creaky voice. So it's really amazing what your subconscious will do to you to keep you from facing your fears. And also that there is a, I believe that there is a medical side to not finding your voice and not being who you really um, could be. And Can it, I tell you a quick story? Yeah, please. Yeah, I, I write about uh, a woman in my book, and her, her first name is Kim. And Kim is a, is a mom uh, in, in her early 50s, and she has two, two full-grown daughters. And you know, Kim did the best that she could based on what she knew at the time. She drove to work every morning and, and said a prayer to herself as she went to work. And as she would get out of the car and walk across the parking lot, you know, her heart breaks. Would, would start increasing. Uh, her, the, her palms w would get sweaty. You know, her, her chest would start kind of constricting on itself. And as she walked down the hallway on, on the way to, to the doctor's offices, where, which is where she worked at the time, it got to the point where she had to brace herself up against the wall and say one last little prayer before she turned that doorknob to step into what she knew was going to be another another toxic draining day uh, on her soul and you know Carol trying to be the responsible mom and and the responsible working wife and a support to her husband she put up with that for a long long time thinking that okay this is the right thing to do yes it hurts yes it's not a full use of my gifts my personality my voice but this is the right thing to do. And it, it took a while for her to figure out, you know what, she wasn't serving anyone like she wanted to serve them in, in being in that toxic environment. And to, to make a long story short, you know, Kim, I remember the phone call. She told me I, uh, on a coaching session, I said, Kim, what have you done for yourself since the last time that we talked that has empowered you? And she said, Joel, I quit my job. Good for her. And, yeah, and it was weak in the knees, powerful that, that she did that because all of a sudden she was free, free to dance in her own skin and to bring empowerment to people, to bring clarity to people, to pour into people what she she had available in, in her own inner, inner resources and her her daughter, one of her daughters, her first name is Alexis. Alexis actually sent me an email and said, Joel, thank you for bringing my mom back. And it was to, to make you cry. I, I think I did actually when I, when I read that email because her family was experiencing Kim at her, at her finest, at her fullest. 
not only that, but Kim was creating ripples in her family that would be carried on for, for generations because she really understood and got a hold on, got handles on the power of, of finding your voice and then moving, moving with it. Well, I did the same thing, Joel. Um, I used to work for the electric company many years ago, and I would drive to work bawling my eyes up. I would sit in the parking lot not wanting to go in. I was a single mom. I had no option, really. Sure. And as soon as I, as soon as I married Steve, I'm like, I'm quitting my job. Like, welcome to married life. I can't do this anymore. So, but that was a very scary step for me to take, and it was the first step in this reinvention. I just didn't really realize it way back then. So, absolutely, you do what you need to do, but then as soon as that you've got that window of opportunity to to really stop tolerating what it is that's driving you crazy and bringing you down, then do what you can and, and take those steps. And when you can escape and be free, do it, is my <laughs> advice. <laughs> so we've got one minute left, Joel. Okay. Why don't you tell us about your relaunch uh, show that you're doing with, with your wife, Kay? Sure. I'm so excited about that. You know, um, people are eager and hungry for, for a relaunch. And a lot of times it can be a relaunch of choice, like the things that used to excite you and turn you on just kind of don't have that same spark to them. Or it can be a, a relaunch of necessity. You know, situations change, circumstances change, uh, locations change. And sometimes it's one or the other, but sometimes, and what I'm finding is, relaunch can also often be a combination of both, of choice choice and of necessity. And the relaunch show is a, a place to get inspiring stories, fresh ideas, and practical steps from our relaunch artists. Some of the hottest and the most in-demand uh, names in the, in the personal development uh, field today. Daily, Monday through Friday, on our show. Just go to relaunchshow.com. Get all the information and uh, be on board from, from day one. And we are just days away from uh, launching that. We've got about 25, 30 shows in the can already. And we are ready and positioned for that relaunch. Yes, and I will be on that show next month. I Yay! <laughs> so, well, thank you very much, Joel. We'll get back to you in a few minutes. But right now we're going to talk to Brandy Sweezy, our resident expert. And Brandy is known as the Hangout Marketing Queen. She helps coaches, speakers, online thought leaders, and online thought leaders to engage, ignite, expand their audience with Google Hangouts and live video. Hey, Brandy, welcome to the show. Hey, Carol, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you're welcome. So, Brandy, give us a sense of who you are, where uh, you come from, and then let's talk about how you found your own voice and how you help people to find their own voice. How long do I have? Do we have like six hours to go through this? Or, yeah, you know? really. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, well, I've been in, I've been an entrepreneur and in marketing and strategic development for about 20 years. Um, from the Florida Keys originally, I move every two years. I like to change it up. So on the dot, every two years, I relocate um, to keep reinventing myself or just to experience new things. And I got into Google Hangouts last year and kind of. Uh, flew to the top of the charts with that, of the uh, quote-unquote overnight success it took me 20 years to get, and uh, then got dubbed the Hangout Marketing Expert because I understood the um, strategies behind Hangouts and really the psychology and the strategy, the marketing strategy behind it. And so, uh, and I love it because it's definitely my platform. You know, video, stage are my two platforms. So, and uh, what the last part of the question was, find my unique voice. Well, you, well, do, you, do you want to get more specific or do you want to go straight into my, my, my JFBYOU? <laughs> you can go into your JFBYOU. We are probably going to syndicate this. So, <laughs> so, so limit my cussing? <laughs> oh, come on. Word. <laughs> yeah, come on. Anybody, when I interview me, I'm like, a lot to cuss. I'm like, have you ever met me? Of course I'm going to cuss, but I'll try to censor myself just a little bit. Just a tad, just a tad. Uh, it was kind of like what Joel was talking about and what both of you are talking about. I think that, you know, when we start putting yourself out there publicly, it's, you know, you, you 
sometimes concern yourself too much with what people think about you. And I found in my entrepreneurial journey that um, you know the more I study people for in self development, we tend to study a lot of people and listen to a lot of people. And my voice kept on getting. You know, I knew it wasn't mine, and so along with that came a. Um, I like Brene Brown's work a lot. A lot of that came with shame. Like, what if they figure out that I'm really not this sweet or that I have a bad day or that I'm not perfect and I don't bounce out of bed every day with a big smile on my face? You know, we all have different days. And so in that process, I discovered the JFBYOU, which stands for JFB or J bleep BYOU, okay? So, it, you know, and what I'm saying is it doesn't have to be that you know, brazen. It's really just about, you know, being your most authentic self so that if somebody sees you on video and they meet you, you know, at the local coffee shop or at the wine bar, wherever they meet you, there's a congruency. And as you get more congruent with that, the happier you're going to be in life, in, in my opinion. So it's not, you don't have to be like so out there as I am. I'm saying, you know, but just be you. You know, Oprah's got Oprah done. You know, whoever you look up to, they've got them done. So go ahead and just be you and, and rock yourself. And, and then you're going to be much more happy in your life. So that's really the premise. I noticed that I was taking um, Marie Forleo's Beast a couple of years ago. And I watched all of these women transform into Marie's. Yes. <laughs> like, you know, they started to talk like her. They start, I'm like, come on, that's not you. That's Marie. Like, where's your voice? So. And that's really what inspired it. I bought a bunch of products. When I first got into internet marketing, um, I bought, oh, I, I don't want to tell you how many products I bought. And each person I was reading or studying or, you know, looking up to, I got more and more like them. And then finally, I just went on a, like, no information diet and said, you know what, this, I'm not that. I'm not the, you know, Marie Forleo's awesome. You know, she's got her done. I, they don't, we don't need another one of her. You know, Brendan Burchard was another one that I was really, you know, looking at a lot too. And I started trying to be like him. Like, I'm so not that either. And so it was really trying to get, you know, find where exactly I'm at and being happy with that. It's freaking terrifying. You know what I mean? It's terrifying to put your real self out there. So, yeah. Yeah. And and then, you know, you get into social situations and, and it's like, oh, well, I'm hanging out with this person, so I need to act that certain way. And it's, you know, the people that you're hanging out with are probably not thinking, oh, I'm hanging out with Brandy. I have to act like Brandy. <laughs> you know, they've already found their voice. We'd be kicked out of the bar if they did. You know, I mean? like, come on. Only one of me allowed in any one location at one time, but yeah. <laughs> so, so what are some of the advantages of, uh, like, really using your authentic voice in business for, for coaches and speakers? Well, I mean, for everybody, you know, I mean, okay, so you think about it, you know, blogging really brought about, you know, we have, the, we love that term authenticity, right? That got like, that was such the overused term, you know, it, but I, you know, and when I talk about JV, I don't mean like spew your negativity all over people, you know, but like when, you, when you're sharing stuff, you know, share overcoming a journey. So that really closes the empathy gap. Like Joel was sharing his story, you know, of, uh, you know, the bridge and, you know, the, the coma and it's, you know, uh, with his, you know, parents being, you know, being on food stamps. So horrible. He was sharing, hey, I, I went through this and then I overcame it. So the advantages of sharing that in your business is that if people hold you to a certain guru status, they, they're like, this person doesn't get, well, that's you, Carol. You're awesome. You get to go skiing and you're married. And, you know, I, you'd never be like you. But if you share authentically, like, hey, listen, you know, like I was in bed for a couple of days not feeling so grand about life and myself. And people are like, oh, she gets me and she overcame it. She may have a solution. So particularly for coaches, I think, uh, you know, and speakers, well, for everybody, I think that it's really important to share those those times, not in such a negative victimy type of way, but hey, and not in a a spin story either, you know. But in a way of, you know, listen, I face my demons every day. You know, there's days when I, you know, as you know, I've been in the cave this last week. I was like done with all social media, and I'm not ashamed to share that. And then people are like, you, you're the social media person. Yeah, yeah, but I'm got mad at it last week, so I took some time off, you know, so, and people are like, oh, you feel that way too? Yeah. Oh, you can relate to me. So. Yeah, absolutely, and, and you know, finding that authentic voice is, is difficult because when I first started, I went way over to one side of the pendulum, <laughs> and then our friend Michelle Holmes going, well, maybe you can tone it back just a little bit. <laughs> so, 
Well, and I don't think I don't think you know one thing I want to share this too, and like you know a couple of things like two two one of my favorite things that I heard from a a, a world famous uh, entrepreneur. He you know he said his number one advice for entrepreneurs was to learn to dance with your demons. Like if there was ever go, your demons are going to come up like in nothing else in your life when you're trying to be out there. A putting yourself out there. B sharing your message. Your stuff's going to come up and it's going to come up big. And instead of trying to squash it and do that swing pendulum thing, just be like, all right, you want to dance? Let's dance. You know, so learning to really dance with your demons is really the secret, in my mind, to, to success in this space. And because we do do those extremes, right? We all have extreme personalities because we live on the edge. Mm -hmm. You know, where most people, you know, it's challenging to live. Yeah, and you know, I've already shared that. You know, one of my fears is being on camera, and I'm being on camera today about finding your voice, and my voice is not working properly. Today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, none of us are perfect. <laughs> no, definitely not. I mean, you know, and that's the thing. You know, the more we're in the era of the more human you are, right? And this includes corporations, right? They're really trying to humanize that. You know, like the more human imperfection factor you can put in there, you know, you'll see some corporate things where so like Tesla went through a big thing. You know, the car blew up. The guy, you know, he came out of nowhere and he wrote a letter and said, you know, hey, listen, this is what's going on. This is what happened. Instead of you know scouring away and trying to hide it and trying to have some PR company spin it you know and, and it's the same with you know particularly as you know solopreneurs or entrepreneurs and mompreneurs or you know anyone that's out there you know the more you can you know close that empathy gap and people can relate to you the more likely they are to receive your help instead of holding you at a different a different level and, and same to you when you're hiring mentors and coaches remember that they're human too they make mistakes too and not to put them on a pedestal the day of that I think is is is, is really falling apart so. so what happens or sorry not what happens what do you suggest for people who are in corporate America and corporate Canada because I'm in Canada um, how do you recommend that they find an authentic voice for their their brand um, and core, like big corporations, or well, you mean like like big branded corporations? How about the level up from the solopreneur, the the building momentum entrepreneur who's got maybe ten employees and is is rapidly growing? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's you you apply you keep on you know scaling and leveraging the same thing. You know, I mean, we've all heard start with your why, so you already have to have that kind of foundation to it, and then making sure that your corporate voice is consistent as well. You know, sometimes we hire copywriters and they they want to do long form sales letters. Well, that's you know, I don't do that anymore because it's not my voice, uh, and I know that my audience responds to to my voice. You know, not. But that's not an ego thing, you know what I mean? They're my audience for a reason and they respond to my voice. When I hire copywriters and, and it drowns out my voice, I, I'm going to have less success. So it's really understanding, you know, especially as you're, as you're growing, really making sure that the entire company has a voice, right? Whether that be yours or your corporate umbrella, you know, discovering what that true voice is and then making sure that that's consistent in everything that you do. So it's not, you know, when you talk to HR, they're a certain way, and you talk to the CEO, and they're a certain way, and you talk to the secretary, and they're a different way. You want there to be a consistent voice and a consistent feeling within your environment. Right, and that starts with hiring the right people who, yeah. who share your core values. Yeah. Right. So I just, <laughs> I just got completely lost. Um, <laughs> let's talk about Google Hangouts because that's what we use, obviously, to. Uh, film this show. So can you explain how Google Hangouts can help a business person to share their voice? So I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's multifold. So one is to really understand the psychology of it. So we talked about blogging bringing about authenticity, right? That was the first big boom. Then we had teleseminars where we had some tonality. So we felt like we were more getting to know you because we could hear you. You know, then we moved into the go-to webinar. Now I have a visual and I have your tone, okay? You know, the, the webinar format. Then the next came video, and video just exploded, and it's still exploding, really. But what happened with video when I talk about closing that empathy gap is video 
um, widen the empathy gap with a lot of people because you know all of the intros and outros and jump cuts and fancy studios and so people will be like oh like Marie Forleo would be a great example you know look at that setup so everybody's like well I can't do video because let me look that's Marie and she has a stylist and you know if you go back to her old videos she was sitting on a laptop staring down at the laptop yeah you know it, that's how she started but we get into that comparison mode so that's why it widens the empathy gap a little bit. And I think that Hangouts really close the empathy gap and you're, 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 you're live on air, right? Like I, my worst Hangouts ever resulted in my biggest clients, which ones that I thought would like end my career got my biggest clients because I was just like, yes, you know, crap happens. Oh, look, I didn't cuss. Yay. I want a gold star. Um, so, you, you know, you've got to, that, that's the human side of it. People really get to know you one-on-one. -on -one. They feel like you're sitting in the living room. You know, there's a chance to build that rapport. Then on the other side of it, it's really video marketing on Nitrous. It's, you know, Hangouts, Outrank, YouTube videos. You know, how long will that last? I don't know. The Google gods determine that kind of stuff. But right now, it's just incredible for, you know, driving traffic. And you can do external annotations. And you can, you know, up your game really with Hangouts and Outrank everything with minimal effort. And it's free. Cool. I'm sorry. I'm, I am struggling today. <laughs> no worries. No worries. I'm in the same boat. I hear you. <laughs> I'm starting like, oh. You know, you know. <laughs> there you yeah. go. See, you're humanizing the brand. Everybody has crap days, even Carol Wayne, right? <laughs> you know, and I'm just trying to think because I talk all the time about the quadruplets of discontent. They're the the little voices inside you that mess with you, and they come to play, and they they stop you from doing stuff. And I think right now that it's the combination of saboteur and fraudster that are battling in my mind right now. <laughs> 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 All right. So, Brandy, do you have any um, other words that you would like to share with us uh, before we go to the powwow? Uh, I think it's the JFBYOU. I mean, that's really become my 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 thing. I'm I'm launching a show with that, but it's really you know just really the more you can get in touch with you, what we like this whole show has been about, and the more that you can share that you you know again with with people, the the you won't have that. That, that feeling of incongruency or that shame or that, you know, what if somebody finds me out or, you know, I can't, or not having to be on all the time, you know, it just, it, it just, it's like such a release. And when I, when I say this in front of people, you know, like in a group setting, you just feel like, oh, yay, I can breathe instead of having to be so you know, on all the time. So, you know, give yourself the freedom to be you. And, and don't sweat what people think about you. You know what I mean? There's 7 billion people on the planet. Like, so what if somebody doesn't like you? And you haven't arrived until you get a hater. So, there you go. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're not even in this game until you get a hater. So, <laughs> just let the trolls be gone, you know? Yeah. And have you ever had a hater that's more successful than you are? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I listen to a couple different videos when I when I when I say stuff that I know I'm gonna get some pushback on, but I really feel like I have to say I listen to a couple of different videos that I have in a queue on a playlist that are all talking about haters, and you know, it's pretty funny, but it's really I, I won't even say it on your show because it's pretty uh it's pretty graphic, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that when we meet in uh, in California next month. Yeah, perfect. There you go. Cool. <laughs> all right, so let's bring Joel back in, and. Uh, well, sorry. Thank you, Brandy, for sharing with us. No, you're welcome. No worries. This this show is not going to be part of my reel. I can tell you that. Uh, awesome. Off. Awesome. That's <laughs> more exposure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that what? Isn't that what they say that the screw ups actually um, have more exposure than the polished stuff? Anyway. Well, I I think so. I think so. Well, absolutely, and, and again, it shows how you respond to them. That's what they really want to know. When you put a reel out, they want to know how anybody can put out a polished reel. People want to know how you're going to handle the pressure. Like, how are you going to react to the pressure? Like, if you started crying or ended the broadcast or something, then they'd be like, yeah, that's not somebody we want. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the fact that you're laughing about it, you're being honest about it, makes you more, you know, engaging. I agree. So how did you both find your own voice, your your authentic voice. How did you both find it? Go ahead, Brandy. Me? Okay. Oh, I think it was, uh, gosh, you know, I think it's always evolving. Like, I don't think it was a lightning bolt moment. I think that it's an ev just like as we evolve and learn and grow, you know, our more authentic voice comes out, you know, like what Joel was talking about, you know, through different exercises or self-development or, you know, different things. It, it, took, a, it took a while 
you know, because there is, there's different aspects of myself, you know, there's, you know, I was a, a dysfunctional background, so it was the, the cheerleader personality with the victim mentality and this very um, fractured person, so it took a lot of, uh, a long time to get all of that into one person and into one voice. You know, we have our, our corporate persona and our client persona and our, you know, our investor persona and our, you know, it, and so it was really hard to finally get all of that into one voice at, you know, at, at different stages and I, I don't think probably in the last couple of years, you know, just finally saying F it, like, you know, I, I am what I am, you know, sometimes I'm angry and sometimes I'm happy and sometimes I'm depressed and it just is what it is and I'm tired of hiding. I think it's just getting fed up. It's really what it was and then that's where JFBU came from. You know, I was like, you know what, I'm so tired of trying to be, you know, all of these different things, like why can't I just be me? And so that's where mine came from. Cool. Thank you. And usual? You know, uh, like what Brandy said, pe people are tired of, of hiding, and it takes an incredible amount of energy to hide from who you truly are instead of just be that person yeah. and to let people experience you in, in your fullness. And, you know, some people are going to be attracted to you like turning on a magnet. Those are the people that, that that are there for you to serve. Other people will be um, they will be unattracted to you, or they will be uh, they'll have something else to do, or they'll need to be somewhere else. But that's cool too, because those are the people that you probably aren't here to serve, anyways, and, and that's okay. But think about that. Think about that visual that I just painted. If you were to then chase the people that are trying to run away from you you would expend an incredible amount of energy just trying to get there and then kind of kind of tug them back where the people that are already there you're missing an incredible opportunity of serving those people that are already right there in your circle that are looking for wisdom looking for some insight looking for what you have to offer them so having having the courage to just be who you are. That's that's the difference maker. Yeah. Right there. And, and, and that's a maturing that's a maturing process. And as Brandy said earlier, it's in a constantly evolving process. One one of the things that I help people to understand right right in the beginning of, of our conversation is you know finding your voice. It's not a, a timed activity. It, it is it is a ongoing journey. And you're going to learn more about who you really are, what excites you, and what you stand for as you continue to grow in wisdom and in insight and in spiritual and emotional maturity. And gosh, when I say that, it's like everybody can finally take a collective exhale and go, oh, okay, so it's not of, you know, okay, I've got a six-week program with you. That means in six weeks I have to – figure out everything about life and and about you know how to how to harness it and how to balance it all and how to manage it it's like no it's it's an ongoing it's an ongoing process and it is a liberator once people are really able to uh, they're able to get handles on that idea yeah it's like peeling back the onion and you know it is liberating and sometimes it's it's uh, very very um, emotional <laughs> with lots of Kleenex. <laughs> but once you do it, it's great. Now, when I talk to a lot of people who want to keep their personal profiles on social media separate than their professional profile, mm -hmm. what do you think about that? Okay, sure. Me first or Brandy? You started talking first. Go for it. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, you know, you know it, it probably depends on the person. And what what that person is going to be willing to do. Speaking for for my clients, I, I don't tell them what to do. I help them, and I'm I'm a master of helping people come to their own conclusions. And it doesn't really matter if it's the conclusion that I think that they should come to, because who am I? I'm just their their coach. But I, I can frame it in a way that a person will come to the conclusion that's going to drive their business the best. 
because it's in alignment with who they are. And yeah, generally speaking, it, it's about, okay, let me figure out how to combine the best parts of me and how to bring everything together so that clients, or friends, or family, whomever they're seeing is the, the, the real me. So back to your question, you know, how do I feel about that? I think that you are who you are wherever you go. And if you can present yourself that way, you, scary? Absolutely. Does it take a little bit of courage? Yeah, of course. But if you can get into work, the habit of presenting yourself that way, then you don't have to remember, you know, well, what hat do I need to wear for this meeting? Or who do I need to pretend to be for this meeting? Or for this date? Or for this disengagement? And that right there is a difference maker. Your clients and your future clients, prospects, they, they will see your realness and your authenticity and that is highly attractive. There we go. What about, what about you, Freddie? What, what would you say? Oh, I think Joel nailed it perfectly, but then at the same time I was blushing in the background because, you know, uh, well, I'm, I'm very brandy on my personal profile and, and it works for me. And I think he's right. Like, who's to say what's right or wrong? It's a personal decision, but I am very... Um, consistent. And there was a time, I'll just give you an example, there was a time when I was going through a funk so I was just posting little positive quotes this was a couple of years ago. And people were writing me behind the scenes, they're like, well, what happened to Brandy? And I was like, listen, I'm having a really crappy time right now so I'm posting all these quotes just to make myself feel better. And they're like, yeah, but we liked it better when you were sharing you. And sharing me, Carol, you've been, you've been, I don't, you've seen sometimes when I post so what's really going on in my life. But I get a huge response. So, you know, I think that, you know, it works for me, but that's you know, it really is. I'm very, you know, like no matter where I go, I'm exactly the same. You know, whether it's like this or, you know, watching hockey or at a speaking conference, wherever, you know, I'm consistent. So it, it, it's good for me. So once you have, you're comfortable with that, then I don't think it matters either way. On my profile, my business page, uh, I'm not as active. So usually over there, I do. Oh, here's an update on Hangouts, or here's a quote, or here's something that you know what I mean. But on my personal profile, I'm pretty vocal, so yeah, which yeah, would be, yeah I, would be shocking to you, I'm sure. But <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and I also like to like I use my Facebook profile strategically. Uh, we can see, like you said, I go skiing, and I've you know been married for 19 years, and I share stuff like that because that makes me real. Um, but last week I had a terrible week, and I posted that too. Like it's it's not all lollipops and rainbows, but yeah. <laughs> so it's important. Exactly. It's important. And then of course I also posted that my <laughs> my husband rolled over in the middle of the night and gave me a big big kiss and a big hug. He doesn't remember a thing, but he his subconscious knew that I needed that hug right there when I was sleeping <laughs> because I didn't get it when I told him that I was having a hard day. So there we go. <laughs> now there's the yeah, antology. I go way down rabbit hole sometimes. So let me bring it back and um, and say for those people who are really really struggling to find their voice, like really struggling, where would you start? Do I think that'll be a question to me or to Mary? Yeah, go ahead, Brandy. No, I thought that was going to be more you. That's more up your alley. Good uh, as the uh, and I loved what you called it. The master. What what was the uh, term you used? The master of discovery that you do, Joel. You talking to? To you. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> to you, Joel. Yeah, because there was something you said a little while ago that was like the master of uh, helping people to discover something. So. Oh yeah, helping. Well, I'm a master of helping people really discover what's going to work for them. One of the things that I say to my clients at the very beginning, like the first sentence that I say to a client is I say, you know what, one rule for coaching. Can I share that with you? And they always say yes. And I say, don't believe a word I say. And most people will kind of laugh or they chuckle or whatever. And then I say, no, straight up, don't believe a word I say. And they're like, huh? What kind of coach are you? And then I ask them, I say, well, just because I share an idea or an insight or a story with you, whose experience am I coming from? And they said, well, yours. I was like, right. Does that make it right? And then they go, well, no. And then I said, does that make it gospel? And they're like, well, no. And does that make does that mean that's the only way to do it? I've got to do what Joel says? I was like, well, no. I was like, no, of course not. 
I'm just sharing with you my experience. I've done this for a long, long time. And if my experience lines up with your personality style, with your values, with the things that you think will really add traction to your personal growth or business growth journey, implement it. Try it on. You know, like, like a new pair of shoes. Try it on. See if it fits. If it does, let, let's walk confidently forward. If it doesn't, that's cool. Not going to hurt my feelings. Throw, let's uh, just throw it to the side. Find something uh, that works for you. So uh, masterful in the art of really figuring out what's going to work for people, for the individual. Because like you said, Brandy, you know, we're, we're all different, and we all need a tailor-made solution. See, here's the problem. With, with, with personal growth, and this, this is where I start to piss off people, is when people, like, they, they read a book or they get a program or they watch a, a video, and then they go, okay, well, that worked for so-and-so, and he's making or she's making six figures or they're making seven figures. Let me just do what they did, and, and that will that'll work for me. And in theory, that, that's a great concept, but in reality and in practicality, it doesn't always work. Not because the plan is flawed or the person is flawed, but because the personality styles are different and they're separate. And what works for one person doesn't work for another person. I, I write in my book, of Finding Your Voice, that cookie-cutter solutions simply don't work because we're not cookies. <laughs> we, we each need an individualized, tailor-made plan that will work for us. Because if it was as easy as just going out and, and reading uh, a best-selling book and going, oh, okay, I'm going to mirror exactly what that guy did. If it was that easy, we'd all do it. But it's not. We need to figure out our personality style, our values, our dreams, our passions, and then figure out, okay, how am I going to take what I know about myself and weave that together with these other parts of, of my, my personality and my giftings to use them to help me move forward. I just completely took over your show. I apologize for that. <laughs> you know what? It's good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we both did. I started interviewing him. Sorry, Karen. Do you know what? I actually asked both of them to help me out today just because I was having a bit of an off day. So I thank you both for doing that. No worries. But I think it, like, in answer to your question, like, you, you know, uh, to how, how, where would somebody get started on finding their own voice is like really getting in touch with who you are, and I. Yeah. And that's easy to say and so flipping hard to do. It really and that's is. why you know Joel and I, I think all three of us have agreed this entire show is it's a constant evolving process. Still, it's just like when people are trying to find their passion. Like there's going to be some light. Like I know for I went out to the middle of the woods in a cabin for five months, waiting for the skies to part, the trumpets to blare, to tell me what my passion was. And guess what? The only the only thing I learned is that I cannot live in the woods for five months. That's all I learned there. And, and so really stop putting so much pressure on yourself Set to, it out. Ah, you know, this is what's going to happen. It's more like, okay, I'm more like this, I'm more like that. I like this a lot, I like this less. This makes me happy and feels energized. This makes me feel a little bit icky. You know, what do I stand for? What do I stand against? What will absolutely intolerable in my space? You know, what makes my heart light up? You know, and just keep, you know, asking yourself questions throughout the day, you know, throughout the week. You know, this is when I feel the happiest. For me, I feel the happiest when I'm helping people. That was my, you know, it took me forever to really discover that. Like, when was I the least neurotic? You know, when did I seem the most at peace? When I'm outside of myself helping people. So that was where I started to find more of my voice. So, like, that's my big word of advice on that is take some of the pressure off and just start going in, in, in. Who am I really? Who am I really? And it is terrifying. I can tell you, as an abused child, you know, I've got, you know, war stories that, that you know, you make you cry. It, you know, it's terrifying to be seen, and I get it. But the more in touch you can get with that, the more release you have and the more at peace you'll be and the more easy it'll be for you to speak your truth. Well, when people remove the grading system, and that's something I talk about in, in the book, you know, throw the grading system out the window Yeah. and they start getting real with themselves, that's when the difference starts, starts to make. And by grading system, I'm th what I mean by that is thinking to like, okay, well, is this going to be good enough for other people? 
Right. So who, who cares? Is it good enough for you? Yeah. Or is it good enough for you? Okay. Then if it's good enough, then leave, leave it alone. And uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, and you probably run into this too, Brandy and Carol, that a lot of times when you ask somebody a question, it can be a client or it can be just a, fr a friend or a family member, they, they have to think about it because they have to run it through that spam filter that's up here, right. thinking, well, is this, the, is this the answer that's going to win approval? Is this the answer that's going to get them to smile? Is this going to give me a gold star or an A? And a lot of times what I what I uh, encourage my clients, and, and it of course, you got to create a safe space first before you can ask them challenging questions. But I, I remind my clients, I said, I'm not grading you. You know, if, if I ask you a question, it's not to give you a grade. It's so that we can both learn and then use that knowledge to, to build a kick-ass second half for you. Okay. And when, when people... Ha understand that there's a safe space there and that they can't speak openly, they can't create openly, and that they remove the grading system from the conversation, from the experience, it's a difference maker. Awesome. Thank you, Jill. I want to just change this up a little bit. We all have figured out a way to get our voices out there into the public. So, Brandy, you use Hangouts. Joel, you use your radio show. Could you just explain to the audience how you were able to take that step from finding your voice to sharing your voice publicly in a big way, such as your radio show or, or Hangouts? So, Brandy, can you start? Uh, yeah, but I think it goes. It still goes back to um, you know it was a constant evolutionary process for me. You know, it was like you know I, I was I, when I started off like uh, on Facebook. You know, I was in the corporate speaking environment. Then I had you know big huge corporate clients, and then I moved into the spiritual genre, and then you know it was, uh, it, which was beautiful in a way that it was all these different personalities that I had, and all these different, and then they all started to kind of merge together. And then finally I was just like, you know, so tired of like, well, what if my, my corporate clients find out that I go and, you know, sit with crystals and stuff. And then my, my crystal people, what if they find out that, you know, I really want to make a bunch of money and travel the world and I don't want to live off granola and white robes. And then what if, you know what I mean? And it was like all this different stuff going on for me. So it was great that Facebook allowed that opportunity for all of those uh, lives to merge and for the people that were not interested for them to fall off. Um, and so that's really, you know, again, I, uh, you know, I, I, it was a very evolutionary process to really find my voice and to be where I'm at today. Uh, you know, it, it took some time and it took, you know, again, like what I was talking about earlier, you know, do I like this? Do I not like this? Do I feel like a fraud? That's one of my big, and that's the number one thing that every entrepreneur faces, coach faces, speakers face. I was in a multi-million dollar mastermind, lowest buy-in was $8 million, uh, lowest uh, earner in the room was eight million dollars and uh, everybody that got hot seated all said it doesn't matter if you're here or if you're here we're all facing the same issue of feeling like a fraud so the more I can take the fraud piece out the more I can breathe a sigh of relief and you know again you're not you know, I knew a guy that went from two million to two hundred million in less than two years and he felt like a fraud in that he didn't think he had anything to share he didn't think he had anything to share with the public so, you know, and so he's finding his voice again after all of that and really following his passion and he's using Hangouts and Facebook and that kind of stuff. So um, I think the more you do it, the less terrifying it is. I guess that was a really long way to answer your question, but it really is the more you do it, you're going to want to throw up the first couple of times. You, you know, you're going to be like, you, you test a couple of things and then you don't get the response. You've you got to keep moving forward and following your heart in that. Um, you know, so maybe you don't get, you know, a bazillion, you write this, you know, heartbreaking post on your Facebook wall and nobody comments. Who cares? You know, start getting it out there so that you have less fear of rejection for when you share your true voice. Cool. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you. Now, uh, Joel, how about your journey? How did, how did you get from where you were at to having this syndicated radio show? Sure. That's a great question. You know, I was in radio and television for, gosh, a long, long time. And if you've ever been in, in the business, it's just something that gets in your blood. And you just, you, you, when you get out of the business, which I did in, in 
the late 90s, 97, 98, something like that. It's just something that you, that you miss and then you want to get back uh, with. You, you're passionate about using broadcast and to communicate your message, what you have to offer. So it's just been a, a gradual com, coming again. But I've been doing shows for, gosh, I don't know, five or six years. And, and, I, and I, just, I just love it. But um, it's just something that's a, a part of me as far as podcasting, broadcasting, video, and TV. And how did you learn to do the podcasting? Sure. I went to, uh, had a wonderful podcast coach. Uh, I took a course called Podcasting A to Z. Uh, Cliff Ravenscraft gave that, gives that course. I'm also very involved with uh, Podcasters Paradise, which is another podcast uh, mastermind uh, type group. I, I created my own local podcast mastermind group. In fact, I, um, we just met uh, this morning. Oh, is and, that the photo that was on Facebook? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, well, yeah. So we we did that, and I just I just kind of learned. My motto for business and for pretty much anything is get it done, then get it right. And unfortunately, most people, with the best of intentions, try to do it the other way around. They try to get it right, and they try to tweak, and they try to fine tune, and they try to they try to tighten up all the 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 loose ends first, and then to to get it out there to pull the trigger, to do to go with the relaunch. But here's the thing. Once you once you relaunch, anyways, you're still gonna make adjustments. You're still gonna see some things that need to be kind of improved or taken away. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make those improvements and adjustments, anyways. So you might as well just get it done, and then get it right. Give yourself a timeline to get get it out there. Whatever it is, ebook, a podcast, a YouTube video, uh, a webinar, and then. Learn from your experience and make whatever adjustments, then get it right. Right. That uh, is uh, wise words from you, Joel, because I am launch. well, I'm not launching, I'm finishing my first online program by next week because I'm on a, uh, another podcast and I'm allowed to promote it at that podcast. They'll talk about <laughs> talk about getting it done and then getting it fixed afterwards. <laughs> Nothing like having a, a show with 75,000 people in the audience that will all hear that I'm doing this. So there we go. <laughs> my little plug for my, my own stuff. It's called the Force Formula for Business Reinvention. <laughs> there you go. So thank you both so, so much. And thank you so much for like carrying me along on this on this show. It, it's not good when, when you're just not on, on your game, so I really appreciate that from you guys. Now, I also ask all my guests if they've got a gift for the audience. So do you have something that you would like to give to the audience? You're asking me or you're asking Brandy? Uh, both of you. Okay, go ahead, Brandy. <laughs> I was going to say, go ahead, Joel. Uh, yeah, I think I put in the notes last night. I'll put up a free training on just how to use Google Hangouts, um, a tool. It'll be at hangoutsforbusiness.com forward slash uh, the reinvention show. And um, it'll be uh, probably, I haven't, even, I haven't done it yet. For those of you live viewers, if you want it right now, um, I can send you one uh, at brandy at brandysweezy.com. Um, but, yeah, it'll be over there probably, hopefully, by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brandy. And, uh, Joel? Absolutely. Yeah, I wrote a, a fun little flip through ebook called um, Seven Days to Self Care. And yeah. really, when, when you, you want to find your voice, it all starts with self care. And, and I think that that's what a lot of people miss. They think about tasks. Okay, I've got to do this, and I've got to do this, and I've got to do this. But really, it, it all starts with okay, I need to get in touch with myself, and that begins with, with self-care. And the seven days to self-care little ebook. It's it's easy, it's fun, you flip through it. It's a fyvradio.com slash self-care ebook. And I know Brandy's got, or not Brandy, but uh, Carol's got, got the links for that. And, and that is our gift for anyone uh, who wants it. Uh, no strings attached, a complimentary slash self-care ebook. Awesome. And it is, it is yours. Thank you, Joel, and thank you, Brandy. 
So, there we go. Another incredible The Reinvention Show. Next week, we've got Michelle Van Otten and Sandra D. Robinson talking about reinventing your personal brand. So, go over to thereinventionshow.com, put your name and your email in the box so that you can get the emails with the gifts and notification about upcoming shows. Until next time, bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Keith. Bye. Bye.